TriCaster has a variety of other inputs that can be used during the live production, including two network inputs. Now, we've already discussed setting those up. They allow us to bring in the display of an external computer or an Apple AirPlay device. But let's take a look at using them during a live switch. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring up network input number one on preview. And again, you can select any computer that's running IVGA, the output of live text, or you can select receive if you want to set this up as an Apple AirPlay device. I'll just select my computer for right now. And then, of course, you can switch to that like any other input in the TriCaster. Now, there are two of these network inputs. So while one is being displayed, you could come over to the second one and choose the next variable. So here's the next computer I want to go to. And again, we put that one on preview, Net2 on preview, and we can switch to that one. This allows you to roll dozens of computers into your production with no scan converter and no swapping of cables. And you can easily switch between one computer to another, Mac or PC, and again, even bring in those Apple AirPlay devices by putting that on receive and having the TriCaster attached to a wireless network that your Apple AirPlay device can log on to. The TriCaster also features a variety of media players, including two DDRs, or digital disc recorders. Now, these DDRs are the first tab on either side of our modular tab-based interface. So here are our two DDRs. You see that we have our transport controls down here and all of our video clips loaded up. Now, again, if you're going to be using video clips inside of the DDRs, you want to load them in before the live production starts using the import media uh, requester. Once they're loaded up, you can hit the add button, you can load up whatever you want into the DDR, and it's ready to go. Now, transport controls down here work the way you would think. You've got a play button, you've got a stop button. We've already talked a little bit about single and autoplay. Again, single is going to play whatever clip is currently selected only. If single is turned off, it's going to play this entire thing like a list of videos, one after the other. Autoplay is automatically going to start the DDR when the DDR is switched to, and it's going to automatically switch back when the clip is finished playing and queue up the next clip. Let me go ahead and show you how this works. We're going to go ahead and find the clip that we want to start with. Now, again, I do have controls here on the control surface as well. I can select DDR number one, and you've got not only stop and play, but you have advance to next clip and advance to previous clip. So I can go ahead and advance on out to the clip that I want to start with, queue up the clip that I'm looking for. There it is. It's ready to go. And again, we have autoplay and single turned on. We put that DDR up, switch to the DDR. It automatically plays. I brought V1 up on preview. Don't touch anything. As soon as the clip is finished playing, it automatically switches back to whatever's on preview and queues up the next clip. You want to play the next clip? Hit auto. You're playing the next clip. I can switch to a different input. When that clip is done, you get yellow when it's under 10 seconds and red on the scrub bar when it's under 5 as a visual cue. Then again, it comes back to whatever's on preview with whatever transition you have selected and cues up the next clip. Now, you also have the ability to set in and out points on these clips. As you mouse over down here, you'll see the cursor change to two black arrows, and that's telling you that you're over the handle for either the out point or the in point of a clip. Here, I'm going to come down to another clip. We'll work with this one. So I can set the out point, and you see the clip in preview as you're scrubbing on it, setting the out point. And again, you can come over to the left-hand side, grab the handle, and you can set the in point. And this means that you could have one long clip. You could put it in there, and you can right-click on a clip and say clone. And you can clone that clip over and over again and just reset the in and the out points, and make one long clip into several smaller clips by doing some basic cuts only editing right inside of the DDR. Now, the DDR also allows you to adjust the playback speed, and you can go faster or slower uh, than normal playback speed. And again, if you adjust this speed and you want to get back to 100%, simply hold down the Shift key on your keyboard and double click, and it will automatically reset that to 100%. Now, you also have a loop control right here, which will loop the clip, or it will loop the entire list of clips, depending upon whether or not you have single turned on and off. The DDRs, like all media players inside of the TriCaster, also have a variety of presets. And if you run your mouse over to the left here, here are the presets. And we talked about these when we were loading the DDRs up. Just a quick and easy way to change out the media that you have access to. And there are 20 presets 
per media player. So again, the presets for the second DDR are over here on the right hand side. Now, one other way to determine where you are in the clip's playback is by looking at the time of the clip. So if we bring up a clip, whenever you bring up a clip, you get a time readout down here. And by default, this time readout is the full length of the clip and it's set in countdown mode, which means if you start playing the clip, you get a countdown. Again, if it's under 10 seconds, this bar turns yellow. When it's under five seconds, this bar turns red as a visual cue that the clip is about to end. Now another media player available in this TriCaster is the graphics player. Now the graphics player is located right next to DDR number two and it brings up an area that looks a lot like a DDR but again this allows you to work with still images and the live editable title templates in the TriCaster. Now there are presets available so you can organize your still images and you can also set up some of the presets to work with the title templates, no problem. Now, you can use this like a traditional still store. We do have the graphics uh, channel here on our switcher, so we can switch to it, just like any other input. And then again, here on the control surface, I can use the controls, and I can manually advance from picture to picture and show what it is that I want to show. Now, you also have the ability to set up a duration on these images and play them back like a slideshow. And one of the great things is, you can multiply select and set durations up on multiple clips at the same time. We'll right click, we'll say set duration, we're going to set the duration to 2.5 seconds, and I'm going to queue up the first clip, these are the ones that I set the duration on, and you can see now we'll turn single off, we have autoplay turned on, and again we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch to our graphics player, and when we do it starts the slideshow for us plays the slideshow from image to image until it gets to the end of the list. Once it's at the end of the list, it's automatically going to transition back to whatever's on preview. So it's a way of doing a slideshow and automatically bringing it in and out of the production. Now again, the presets can be used to set up the different types of images, the titles with and without alpha channel, whatever it is you want to use, but you also have the ability to bring up the title templates. Now notice that you have the transport controls down here for the title templates as well. And this is interesting in that you can set up a graphic build. So here we took one title template and we modified it and we went ahead, let's put that on program out just so you can see it. We went ahead, whoop, let's go ahead and put that on program out so that you can see it. And we went ahead and put in a schedule for this evening's programming, seven, eight, nine, and 10 o'clock. And then you're able to right click and clone any of these either images or title templates. So you simply clone it four times and then you just start removing the lines. So you have this nice graphic build starting with an empty graphic and then over time building up. Now again, you can right click, select, say I want each one of these to play for 1.5 seconds. But now I'm going to go to the very first one because this one comes in on a transition. We're going to make this one two seconds, so it has a little time for the transition to happen. And the last one, we want it to hang on that for a little while before it comes out. So that one, we're going to make that five seconds. Now again, let's go ahead and we've got our talent on air. We're going to queue up our first graphic, which is the empty one, and we're going to put autoplay on, but not single. We want it to play the whole list. Now when you switch to the graphic player, it starts playing back your graphic build. It hangs on the last graphic for enough time so that we can read everything that's on the graphic and then automatically switches back to whatever you have on preview. The graphics player is a great way of producing graphics, use it working with stills, and again, you can use anything in there inside of the downstream keys. So if it's a title or a still image that has alpha channel, it can be used as an overlay in the TriCaster.